American Hysteria is a podcast that dives deep into moral panics, urban legends, conspiracy theories, hoaxes, and crazes throughout history in order to examine how fantastical thinking has long shaped our culture. With a wide range of topics, including Stranger Danger, the Gay Agenda, Satanic Cults, the Westboro Baptist Church, Trash Talk Shows, and Phantom Clowns, American Hysteria is sometimes hilarious, sometimes horrifying, and sometimes heartfelt. I'm your host, Chelsea Weber-Smith. And now you can subscribe to American Hysteria on Apple Podcasts, where you'll get ad-free episodes and bonus content. So come and listen to American Hysteria, wherever you get your podcasts. In 1928, it was not safe to go in the water. I'm Jason Horton, and this is Strange Year. 1928 gave us Mickey Mouse and the yo-yo, but a not-so-great flood made 1928 a strange year. Noah's Ark, November 1928. The film was directed by Michael Curtis, who later directed Casablanca. Warner Brothers produced Noah's Ark and was one of the first talkies. It was also one of the most expensive films at that point, partly due to its large-scale flood sequence. Noah's Ark is a 1928 American epic romantic melodramatic disaster film based on the biblical story of the Great Flood and stars Dolores Costello and George O'Brien. The film tells two parallel stories, one set in the ancient biblical times of Noah and the Great Flood, and the other set during World War I. In the biblical story, Noah, a righteous man, receives a divine vision foretelling a great flood that will cleanse the earth of sinners. He builds an ark to save his family and pairs of animals. As the floodwaters rise, they seek safety on the ark, where they endure the storm until the waters recede and they can begin anew. In the World War I story, a group of characters is introduced, including a German-American and a Jewish-American, who both love the same woman. The film explores themes of love, sacrifice, and redemption against the backdrop of the war. The climax of the film features a dramatic flood sequence, created using a combination of special effects and real water, which was one of the most expensive scenes ever filmed at the time. Then disaster struck. During the filming of the flood sequence, a massive outdoor tank filled with water which involved thousands of gallons of water, was used to create the flood effect. However, due to inadequate safety measures and the limitations of filmmaking technology at the time, the water surged out of control, sweeping over barriers and engulfing the extras on set. Numerous cast and crew members asserted that both Curtis and writer Daryl F. Zanuck were fully aware of the potential dangers. Some testimonies from the harrowing production even suggested they were indifferent to risking their colleagues' lives. Cinematographer Hal Moore attempted to caution them about the impending catastrophe. I said, Jesus, what are you going to do about the extra people? Curtis said, oh, they're going to have to take their chances. I said, not as far as I am concerned. I'll never have anything to do with a thing like that. They insisted on doing it their way, so I told them to abandon the picture and left the set. Subsequent investigations and Warner Brothers legal records do not definitively document the actual fatalities. Whether eyewitness accounts inflated the truth or studio executives suppressed, it remains unclear. The exact number of casualties is disputed, with reports ranging from one to three deaths and numerous injuries. The tragedy led to increased safety regulations in the film industry, particularly regarding the use of water in movie production. Despite the disaster, Noah's Ark was released to theaters and was a modest success. It is remembered today for its innovative storytelling and its place in the history of cinema marking a transition from silent films to talkies. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll be back next time with another episode of Strange Year.